Barakim Habarim. Welcome to Messianic Moment Ministry. I'm Stephen Brock. I guess you know who you are. And today is the 28th day of May, 2024. In ancient Rome, <clears throat> before forensic medicine, when someone wanted to take out somebody, and I don't mean go on a dinner date, they would poison them with a slow-acting poison, putting you know just a little at a time in their food so that the person would think they were getting sick and eventually die, never knowing they were murdered. Yeah, let's, let's do some administrative stuff. You guys all know this, those who are here all the time. Please, if you haven't done so, subscribe. There's a subscribe button on the website and one here on YouTube. Please do them both because they're different lists. And like my Facebook page, you know, and when you do this, click the notifications, click that little bell, you know, click, click, click. So you, oh, excuse me. So you're advised every time I post a new message. I also have the Facebook discussion group. It's called Just God's Word. I invite you to join. But again, you got to click that you agree to the rules or hey, I can't let you in. I can't even send you a message and say, hey, click to the rules. So please do that. And if you like what you get here, you're definitely going to like my books. I got five of them out there. The newest one is called Not the Holy Bible. Learn the Bible without having to read it. So if you're somebody who, you know, worships God, you're a believer, but you never really went through the Bible because maybe it's too long, maybe it's too, you know, too much Shakespearean language, hey, read my book. It's an easy read, and it'll give you a much better idea of what the Bible says. And if you know somebody who's interested, give it to them. It's a great gift. Anyway, that's it for that. You find them on Amazon, by the way. Just put it in the search field, Stephen R. Brock, and it'll take you right to them. And finally, please share these messages with everybody you know, you know, whether they're a believer or not. Put out the seed. Okay, enough admin stuff. So the reason I'm talking about slow-acting poison is because what's even worse than a physical poisoning is a spiritual one. After all, this, this mortal existence here, you know, it's just a fleeting moment in time, whereas eternity goes on and on forever. And that's the life we want to share in. Anyone who claims to worship God must be looking forward to eternity, and not in the hot seat, but with God in paradise. As such, you know, well, what could be worse than to slowly, unknowingly, find yourself being spiritually poisoned, leading you not on the pathway to paradise, but on the road to perdition. And that is exactly what almost every religion is doing, especially the Christian ones. There can be no denying that the only place in the entire Bible where God himself tells us how to worship him and how to treat each other the only place you find that is in the first five books. It's called the Torah. Nowhere else from Joshua through Revelation does God himself say what to do with regards to worship. Yeah, you know, he talks to prophets, but that's only telling them to get the people back on the proper worship track. And he, yeah, sure, he sent Yeshua, it's Jesus, he, as our Messiah. But again, that was to, one thing, first teach the deeper spiritual meaning of what he's already told us to do, and uh, even more important than that, to provide a way for people to find forgiveness of sin, because, well, God knew that soon enough after Yeshua was here, the temple would be destroyed, and, well, without the place where God put his name, no sin sacrifice could be acceptable, except the one that Yeshua made for us. Christianity has taught in so many different ways that the instructions God gave to us so we could know righteousness from sinfulness, well, they teach they're not relevant to Christians. As such, God-fearing Gentiles who are a member of any one of the multitudes of Christian religions are, are being led astray. They are slowly being poisoned spiritually by those who are teaching them really how to reject God, all the while telling them, hey, this is good for their souls. So no, <laughs> what is someone to do if they don't know they're being poisoned? My answer is that they need to cook their own meals. And what I mean by that is they need to read the Bible. Forget, forget what they've been told it means 
ignore their religious training and determine for themselves, for yourself, what God wants from you. And I'm not just talking about Christianity here. In Judaism, we have also added many requirements called halakha, which are not God-commanded, but man-made doctrines that add to God's commandments, <laughs> which, you know, he specifically said we shouldn't do, and he said that more than once. Fortunately, God is able to heal any disease. And, you know, if you're concerned, if they're listening to this, that, no, oh, maybe you're subject to spiritual poisoning. And if you aren't concerned, I respectfully submit that you might already be too sick to know. Well, <clears throat> please start today, this very day, to read your Bible. Begin at Genesis, go straight through all the way to Revelation. See for yourself how God describes himself what he says we are to do, how he has treated people who worship him correctly and those who don't. Consider how he told Abraham the world would be blessed by his progeny, which led to the Messiah, and that God also told Moses, this is Exodus 19.6, the Jews would be God's kingdom of priests. Then immediately after that, in Exodus 20, he gave us the Torah so that as priests for God, we could take God's instructions for righteousness and bring it to the world. That's what priests do, right? We're a kingdom of priests. You guys are the clerical. Anyway, here's your first anti-poisoning treatment. The Torah is not just for Jews. It was given to the Jews to bring to everyone else. So, going forward, please consider continuing to treat yourself to more truth only from the Bible and not by some man-made religion. God has no religion. God has no religion. Only his instructions for how to worship him and how to treat each other. Thank you for being here. And please remember, share these messages with everyone you know. Help this ministry continue to grow. All right, my friends. That's it for today. So, Yitrot and Baruch Hashem.